everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. It is an absolutely beautiful day out. We have a bonfire going. We're burning some of the stuff, um, the, the leaves and some of the scraps from the garden that we didn't want to compost. And so we're just burning those so that there's some smoke blowing through the air and it's just a nice crisp fall day. It's coat weather. We've already had our first snow and just kind of, you know, it's a love-hate thing. So I love seeing the seasons change. I love seeing all the, the colors and the first snow. It's, it's a Michigan thing, it's beautiful. And, and unless you've experienced it, uh, you probably will never know what I'm talking about. It's just a, it's a stunning, stunning time of year. And so, um, and wow, there's a lot of little bugs out everywhere. It's just crazy. I, the warm weather brought them out like crazy little nap thingies. Uh, anyway, so what we're gonna be doing today is just, is just uh, we're gonna be harvesting some stuff. And it was kind of a surprise harvest actually, because. I had no idea that they were even here or ready. I knew I planted them and I knew I neglected them and I knew I never knew where they were because they were surrounded by weeds. But we started weeding, got all the weeds cleared out. And what we were surprised with is once I came up here about five or six weeks later, what is laying on the ground is actually the tomatillos. So we're gonna get a chance to see the very first tomatillos we've grown successfully here and kind of an, un, an unsuccessful, very, weird method of harvesting because they're not even on a plant they're actually on the ground so come check out what we got it's pretty cool and then we're actually going to harvest some kale i want you to check out the kale we got going on it is beautiful it's beautiful kale and we also harvested a couple jalapenos um, because we pulled out the plants and they were just kind of hanging on the plants so we got those and it's not worth showing us like three or four of them but it's something that's what is always great is making the best out of a situation because i'm really bummed about the garden uh not doing as well as it normally did the weeds overtook, but stay tuned for an episode that we're going to do. Cindy and I are going to do a season in review and we're going to talk about massive, massive plans for the garden. And so it should excite all of you. It should get really just uh, hyped up because uh, we're waiting to show you all once everything is kind of done. There's a lot of work going on. The seed store is getting prepped, which by the way, stay tuned for an, up uh, an update on that because we're gonna be unveiling that in the coming week or so. And so there's gonna be a video on that. And there's just been so much going on in our lives as far as MI Gardener related stuff goes that we just want to wait till all the, the craziness is, is gone so we can unveil the real surprise for next year, which is coming to this garden. And we're really, really excited about it. So, all right, let's go back, check out the tomatillos, check out the kale, and then that should be about it. <laughs> all right, it's not much, but it's something. So as I'm here panning around, you see all these balls, all these little green balls? Those are tomatillos. And this was from three plants, three plants, believe it or not. And, you know, I hate to say that uh, probably half of them are not good because they've been sitting on the ground for probably longer than they should. And I see some of the papery skins dying away, but I do see a bunch of good ones. So we might not get 100% of these, but we're going to get a lot of them. So come on, let's go. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of feeling the, I'm just kind of feeling the, the papery skin here. And look at that. Check that out, it's beautiful. So there's some that don't have anything in them. I mean, they have a little bit of something, but those aren't ripe yet. But there's some like this that are really nice and plump. Got a beautiful tomatillo in there. So we're gonna get a chance to make some salsa verde. And I'm sure Cindy will be able to make something with these. But you know, there's a lot that have, there's a lot that have been on the ground for just too long. But. I, I mean, what do you expect? But check that out. Look at that beautiful one right there. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's all about making the best of things. It's not ideal. It's not perfect, but it's certainly better than nothing. And I would have loved to have the plants while they're right on the ground or while they're right, not, while they're not on the ground. Uh, I would love to have actually seen the plants before they're in this state because like I said, I've never grown tomatillos all that well. I've tried them a couple of years, but never got anything. Cindy's had amazing success with them. And these are actually the purple tomatillos. And they're purple because they have like a, a really purple tint to the, the shell there. And, you know, it's, 
it's just, it's fun to get a chance to harvest something. And so I'm pleased with whatever I can harvest, but it's also a little bit embarrassing in the same, in the same sense because, you know, I, I can grow just about everything, but this year it seemed like weeds I grew the best. <laughs> and um, some years that's just how it goes. But I, I am seeing a lot of these that are beautiful, beautiful tomatillos that are definitely usable. So we're gonna just kind of squeeze them, squeeze them. If there's got something in there that's worth keeping, I'm keeping it. And if they don't have anything, then I'm tossing it. That's pretty much, pretty much the way it goes. But I am also kind of confused at why nothing has eaten these. They've been on the ground, and there's so many mice up here that I'm surprised. But there are a, a lot of beautiful ones. I mean, wow, check that out. That's gorgeous. And um, I'm I'm slowly getting a nice bag full. So. Again, it's just one of those things you try to make the best out of a out of a bad situation. So I never like to let vegetables go to waste like this, but they'll return to the ground and I'm sure we'll have a lot of voluntary uh, tomatillos next year. So it'll be a it'll be an interesting thing to see what sprouts here. Hoping some of these ones here that are a little bit off the ground are gonna be ripe, but a lot of them aren't because the plant plant got killed quite a bit sooner than than I would have preferred and some of these are not it some of these are not all that good I'll let Cindy pick through these because I know she knows a lot more about it than I do given the fact that she um, her family is comes from Mexico so they grow these all the time and salsa verde is pretty much it's it's a staple in their culture so they know what to use and what not to use. So I'm just gonna take these to her. I think some of these are definitely good, like this one here. That's a that's a beautiful one, but some of these in here probably are gonna get tossed. I'll let her make that decision, but I'll at least, I'll at least take them home um, and see what I'm gonna get. I don't know if I'm gonna take many more than that because it's, I, I don't know, they're kind of sticky and dirty and a lot of them look like this. A lot of them are like just paper skeletons, but um, like this one, oh, look at this. Speaking of the holiday season, <laughs> oh, that's cool. Check that out. So, it's a it's a, it's a fishnet tomatillo. Look at that. There's a nice tomatillo in there. So, well, <laughs> I'm not complaining. Um, but yeah. So you know, I think that's probably all I'm gonna take. I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah. That's probably. I'm probably not gonna take more than that. So, got a nice bag at least. Got probably a pound and a half of tomatillos. Not horrible. Better than what we would have gotten if we just let them rot on the ground. We'll also probably take half of this kale that we're harvesting and freeze it. And if you wanna know how to freeze it, I do have a video on that. I've gotten such great uh, comments on that video. And so I'm glad everyone's enjoying it. But for all the new people that have not yet discovered it, check out that video. I'll post a link in the description box below and I'll post a card to it because it's, it's such an easy way to preserve kale for the winter for pastas and soups. And it's not as good in juices, but it's okay because you're still using fresh stuff from the garden when everything else is dead, so. <laughs> and check this out, wow, this is awesome. This is just a huge, huge plant. Beautiful leaves, and I can't, can't be disappointed by that. Look at this, whoa, one fell swoop. We got ourselves a kale bouquet for Cindy. All right, let's take her some kale, and I think she's gonna love this. Look at that, <laughs> it's awesome. Don't you just love getting a chance to do that? I mean, it's, it's so much fun at the end of the season when you go to harvest a bunch and you just get to pop them all off like that and it's just, it's kind of, it feels good, I don't know why, but that feels really good to get a chance to do that, I don't know. But uh, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So we got ourselves two awesome kale bouquets now and I think we're about done. So there you go, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't a whole lot, but it was fun. I really enjoyed getting to harvest something, especially when there's so much stuff just gone from the garden. So it's great to see life still abounding in some way, shape or form. And we're definitely gonna enjoy a lot of this. 
but I did want to let you know that a lot of this is going to go to our local food bank. There's so many people that are in need. And if you have a garden that's winding down near the end and you know that you're gonna get a harvest that's pretty large like this, definitely give some to your local soup kitchen, food bank, stuff like that, because they're really going to get uh, use out of this more than you probably will, more than we probably will, because there's no way in the world we're gonna eat this much kale. And I know there's a lot of starving mammals out there that would really like this. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all learned something new in some way, shape or form and hopefully you all are growing bigger going home. So there you go. <laughs> I'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.